In this presentation, we will discuss how to deal with bromide and brominated compounds. This work was prepared in collaboration with Butts County by researchers at the University of Georgia with financial support from Butts County and a regional water seed plant grant from the Georgia EPD. Currently, there are no cost-effective and practical methods available to remove bromide from source water. If anthropogenic bromide pollution of source water is stopped, bromide concentrations will be reduced via dilution and fewer brominated disinfection byproducts or DBPs will be present in finished drinking water over time. However, if bromide is continually added to source water, there are no cost-effective methods available at an industrial scale to reduce bromide concentrations prior to disinfection or to remove brominated DPPs following disinfection. In addition to research and development of new preventative and control technologies, identifying anthropogenic bromide inputs to source water and preventing continued pollution is the best and only practical solution available right now to prevent elevated bromide in source water. Despite a lack of practical bromide removal technologies, the impacts of anthropogenic bromide pollution of source water can be partially mitigated by limiting bromide-rich effluent to high flow conditions when natural dilution is most effective, reducing the amount of bromide-rich discharge to surface water at one time by pulsing releases, and implementing aquifer storage and recovery, which involves collecting raw source water when water quality is highest and bromide levels are minimal and storing the water until it is needed. Although there have been strides in optimizing water treatment processes and water distribution networks to reduce the formation of regulated DBPs, there are currently no cost-effective and practical methods to prevent brominated DPBs from forming in the finished drinking water. However, as summarized in Rivera Utrilla et al. 2019, there are several promising DBP precursor removal technologies in development that could eventually yield an efficient and economically viable option to reduce DBPs, including membrane electrochemical and absorption methods. Membrane, bromide, and natural organic mineral removal methods include reverse osmosis, nanofiltration, electrodialysis, and reverse electrodialysis. RO involves high pressure movement of water through a semi-permeable membrane that rejects halides and other organic pollution. Although RO is highly effective at removing bromide, there's a high cost associated with its implementation and maintenance that makes it an unpractical choice for water, public water utilities. NF uses reverse osmosis and ultrafiltration to exclude halides and other nuisance compounds. NF is slightly less costly than RO and can remove halides almost as effectively. However, the short operating lives of both NF and RO membranes limit their practicality in public water utilities. In ED, ions are subjected to electrical currents between membranes with opposite charges, which remove them from the water. RED is similar except that the membrane charges are periodically reversed. They're inexpensive methods compared to RO and NF, but their membranes have short operating lives and are much less efficient at halide removal. Electrochemical bromide removal methods include electrolysis and captive deionization. Electrolysis uses an electric current to oxidize bromide, which is then volatilized as bromine gas by carbon dioxide. This method has produced a 73% reduction in bromated brominated trihalomethanes, but does not effectively remove natural organic matter. CDI involves a pair of porous electrodes that generate an electrical current and store halides with electrical layers. Membrane CDI improves halide removal by adding ion exchange membranes. Although CDI is a promising option for halide removal, there is currently no technology designed at an industrial scale. Adsorption bromide and natural organic removal methods include layered double hydroxides, double sol gel, hydrated oxides, activated carbon, AG, silver doped carbon aerogels, and magnetic ion exchange resins. Adsorption measures are advantageous because they are easily, easy to implement and cheap to maintain. Unfortunately, some of the materials are less selective for bromide, meaning that they do not remove the ion as effectively as the electrochemical and membrane methods. Depending on the compounds present in the source water, bromide might compete with organic matter and other charged molecules for adsorption surfaces, meaning that fewer bromide ions are successfully removed from the water. We end this presentation with a few examples where municipalities and other groups have dealt with bromide, elevated bromide concentrations in source water. We will begin with California, Sacramento, San Joaquin, Delta. The Sacramento-San Joaquin Delta provides source water for 23 million people living in California. 
the demand for water and water scarcity has surged over the past few decades, while the Delta's water quality has steadily declined due to increased salinity and increasing total organic carbon. The Delta's bromide levels have increased due to saltwater intrusion, while total organic carbon increase has been associated with agricultural runoff. California water utilities have addressed the declining water quality by implementing alternative disinfectants and by exploiting alternative water sources when the Delta's water quality is too poor. And it's important to note here that both bromide and total organic carbon levels have seasonal shifts in the system. Updating the water treatment plants and using alternative disinfectants has allowed California's water utility to comply with DBP regulations. However, changes to the water treatment process are expensive and more updates will be necessary to cope with future, further declines in water quality. Rising sea levels and the failure of subsided western islands will also present great challenges for California's drinking water utilities in the near future. Over 1.5 million people rely on the Pennsylvania's Allegheny River Basin as a drinking water source. Recently, dramatically elevated levels of bromide in the Allegheny River Basin surface water has been attributed to wastewater from coal-fired power plants using bromine addition to control mercury emissions. Specifically, bromine is added to wet flue glass, flue gas, uh, desulfurization systems, and high levels of bromide are present in the wastewater generated. Although this wastewater is sent to wastewater treatment plants, the bromide is not removed and ends up in the surface water as discharge. Researchers have documented bromide levels as high as two, uh, 299 micrograms per liter and 599 micrograms per liter in Pennsylvania watersheds receiving coal-fired power plant wastewater discharges. Several papers from Carnegie Mellon University's Dr. Jan Van Briesen and colleagues have highlighted how bromine addition to wet FGD systems will elevate surface water bromide and subsequently increase brominated disinfection byproduct formation in drinking water. No practical solutions have been identified to remove bromide from source water. In 2014, a coal ash basin at the facility owned by Duke Energy contaminated surface waters of the Dan River in Eden, North Carolina. Heavy metals and bromide present in the coal ash spread throughout North Carolina and downriver to the North Carolina-Virginia border. A similar leak occurred at Duke Energy Stream Electric Plant that resulted in the pollution of the Cape Fear River. Also, Duke Energy Coal com Combustion Facilities knowingly discharged coal ash contents without permits into the surface waters. Finally, although it was not a violation of UP US EPA regulations, Duke Energy's coal-fired power plants, wet flue gas desulfurization systems, used bromine addition for mercury control, which further elevated surface water bromide levels throughout the state following wastewater discharge. The elevated bromide levels in various drinking water sources throughout North Carolina and Virginia led to elevated disinfection byproduct formation and an inability to meet the US EPA regulations regarding trihalomethane and haloacetic acid levels. Drinking water utilities upgraded their facilities to deal with the elevated bromine, bromide levels and purchased water from other facilities to meet consumer needs in the meantime. Duke Energy pled guilty to nine violations of the Clean Water Act and has been working with a court-appointed monitor to achieve environmental compliance obligations. Drinking water treatment in Western Australia is challenging because of high concentrations of DBP precursors, including organic matter, bromide, and iodide in the source water. This is especially concerning because, as we know, bromide and iodide create DBPs that are thought to be more cytotoxic and carcinogenic than their chlorinated analogs. Saltwater intrusion and aridity or dryness contribute to the elevated bromide and iodide levels in source water. Although there are effect several effective organic matter removal methods, they do not remove halides and can lead to greater formation of brominated DBPs when the source water bromide levels are elevated. Though Pre-ozonation followed by chloramination has been identified as a potential method to reduce the iodinated DBPs. There's unfortunately no practical bromide removal methods. 